Church leaders are, have been in discussion for years about this matter. Back in uh, 2010, we passed a resolution at the National Council of Churches Forum, really questioning whether offshore processing of, of refugees and asylum seekers was the way to go. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a constant, ongoing concern for church leaders. Various of the churches have task forces working uh, on this area. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's at the front of our minds and has been for a long time. So what's, what's your exact thoughts on the legislation? Look, I'm, I'm really concerned about um, holding people indefinitely in detention and processing people offshore. I mean, wh one of the fundamental principles in working with people across the, the caring services is do no harm. And we know that locking people up indefinitely in detention centres harms them. So I have, I'm deeply disturbed about whether that can be the right approach. Um, the second fundamental principle of, of Christian ethics, but also of our society, is uh, to extend a compassionate hand to people who are in need. Um, you know, we, we cannot be hard-hearted. That is, n there's no future in that. Um, now, I recognise the dilemmas involved in this, and I don't pretend to have a solution. I think our politicians want to be compassionate, uh, but I'm not sure we've got the right formula yet. Uh, I don't have a solution up my sleeve, uh, but I think we have to think again and think more creatively and constructively. Um, it cannot be right to harm people, there's no future in that, and it cannot be right to lack compassion, there's no future in that. We have to be hard-headed, not hard-hearted. We've got to think in new ways about this dilemma, because we haven't found the solution yet. How, how would you rate the importance of this issue right now among all the other um, social issues? Oh, look, I think, I think there are a whole lot of... Uh, um, really important matters facing uh, Australia. You know, we've. Um, uh, I, I remain concerned about our Indigenous people. You know, and, and the gap, uh, bridging the gap, is really, really important. But that's another area I think where perhaps Australians have become hard-hearted. Um, just in this last week, I offered an apology to mothers and babies who were caught up in forced adoption practices, which the church was involved in, uh, in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. Uh, I, I wonder, along with many Australians, I think, how we could possibly have been so hard-hearted as to take babies, newborn babies away from mothers without their proper consent. Uh, so uh, hard-heartedness, in the readings that have been read across the churches today, all around the country, hard-heartedness uh, we're warned is a, is a really s a serious spiritual danger and um, in relation to asylum seekers, in relation to Indigenous Australians, in relation to forced adoptions, hard-heartedness gets us into strife and we've got to beware of it. Um, how, how is the Anglican Church um, bridging this gap? Or are there any steps that the Church is making? Oh, look, we've, um, we're attempting to do things in the area of education. A, a lot of our schools offer scholarships to Indigenous uh, kids, uh, uh, and I think that's, that's a really important long-term strategy. Uh, we're trying to do things in isolated rural communities, but it's tough. It's tough. You know, I think successive governments has found it tough, and the church finds it no easier. Uh, so it's a matter of, of, of working away with hearts in the right place and, and clear thinking. Is there anything practical the church could do for asylum seekers or refugees? Oh, look, the, the church has been involved in resettling asylum seekers and refugees, in, in education programs, in teaching them English, in helping them to settle into communities, in helping them to find housing. So the church is, is ready and willing to, uh, to assist in these practical ways, uh, uh, integrating people into local communities where they can be welcomed and supported. And if you had to tell your parishioners or, or just even members of the Australian public about asylum seekers and, and, and the plight of, uh, of boat people, I guess, what, what is that exact message for them? Well, I, th I think I would encourage people to try and imagine themselves in the shoes of these people who risk their lives on these dodgy boats to try and get to our shores. Uh, if they can imagine the desperation that must be in people's hearts and minds to make them risk the lives of their children and their spouses and their family members 
to, to try to make a new beginning, that might warm our hearts, that might thaw our hearts a bit to extend a more compassionate hand to them.